What up guys, welcome back to a brand new Paragon video, my name is Juan A. Kick, back to um, like always, I'm super happy to have you here once again. This is going to be the part 3 of the patch that we've been, we've been reviewing, we'll be having some comments, we'll be walking through it, and I'm talking specifically about Legions of Agra the newest patch that was released by Epic. This is going to be the part 3 of this huge patch and it's going to be the final part of this long review, okay? So now for this one, what we're going to address, we already addressed the hero balances, we already addressed the monolith and gameplay update and now we are going to actually address uh, the part here, let's see, we are in the full out of the patch. We're going to address uh, the card modifications, okay, the balances that they imp that they implement, gems, and the new UI incorporations of the game, okay? So let's jump ahead into the card notes and cards. All updates are based on level 1 card value but will affect cards of all levels. So start to decks, start to decks have been updated and increased from 8 to 12 cards. That's pretty good because it gives you at least more options for new players that don't actually have any cards uh, when they get into the game for the first time and they start like understanding how the game, the, the, the card system works that really helped them a lot and I really think it's a great uh, change that Epic implement and it was really needed for newcomer, uh, new players actually, okay? As a result, one copy of each of the following cards have been granted to all accounts. So finally, they realized they need to have a new uh, cards that have to be given to the players, okay, the new players, and it's really nice that they actually implement this into the game. Before this, you were struggling in the beginning with starter decks that they really don't help much, to be honest. I think they need to change the default decks that you can use when you are a new player, uh, most with the support deck, the support decks are so bad, <laughs> really, they're really bad. So if any, in any case, if you play support and you're a new player, those decks are really bad, to be honest, okay? So this is really nice that they actually gave these cards to all players, new ones and, and all players, okay? This is really good. With these cards, they're gonna at least have uh, enough to, to, to deal with and in, they won't be able to maybe do a deck, a full deck, but they will be able to actually test things and try new things or actually they're gonna use these cards, okay? So that's pretty good. Now we're going with the changes into the cards. So now we're in the death, okay, uh, affinity. And Finder of Plaything, one of, one of the best uh, cards in the game, in my own opinion. Increases low magnitude to 30%, reduce cooldown to 55 seconds, that's pretty awesome. Finder Plaything is going to be really good right now. Rhyming Spectre, increase the projectile speed to 700, that's pretty good. Reduce expected formation time from 2 seconds to 1.5 seconds. Increases execution threshold to 20%. Oh my god. Okay, this is a huge buff to this card. Rhyming Inspector. Hmm, <laughs> very nice. Namely scores. Increase ability damage dealt from 65 damage per second for 18 seconds to 80 damage per second for 14 seconds. Okay? Flag to lower Malenk reduces slow magnitude. They actually reduce the slow magnitude to 10%. Possess striking reduce health region. They actually reduce the health region from 12.5 to 10. But still, 10 health region is really good. It's really good. I don't think by lowering this much is gonna be. 
a huge impact on the game and as you think it's really good card okay having 10% health reading is a lot does master no longer grant gold when executing your own minion okay and now how actually it works uh, with there in the is there it <laughs> It's not self-explanatory now how the card works, but anyway. Withering Shadow reduce damage per second to 45. Now we go to Knowledge Affinity Accelerator. Reduce cost from 1500 gold to 1200 gold. Black Ice Routine increases slow magnitude to 50%. Oh my lord, this is going to be awesome. This is going to be awesome. Crew Agent increase power to 18. The slow magnitude was increased to 30% and the cooldown was reduced 2 seconds. Huge buff for, for Cryo Agent. Icon Soldier reduced fade duration to 1 second. Generator deduced cost from 1200 gold to 1000 gold. Mana Flow Acolyte, one of my favorite cards from Intellect Moss for Gideon. It's really awesome card for Gideon. Now this place is that count on the Satsu Bar, it's really good, we, 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 we really were needing that. Fixing the issue where Mana Flow Acolyte was included granted 1% per point instead of 0.5%. Okay, the suit for balance. OPD Militia, now the damage is 112. With this increase, I want to test a deck for our boy Twin Blast, okay? We will make an AOP militia deck for him, and we'll see how it how it goes. Okay, rejuvenator increase total health restore from uh, 112 to 160. That's really good. Increase total mana restore from 100 to 130. SSA is run. Reduce cooldown 25 seconds. Hmm. This remind me the old times when everybody was using Estesis gem. In, in in their deck. As the CCM was one of the biggest cards used in the old Paragon. We'll see. The 25 seconds, we're talking about 20 seconds, a uh, reduce of 20 seconds, that's a lot. That's a lot. Tower Maturge, Empowering Mana now currently displays the power gain, that's pretty good. Now we go into the Order Affinity. Brilliant fortification reduce cost from 1000 gold 3 intellect to 500 gold 3 intellect. Interesting. Interesting. This change here reducing the cost for this card. Crippling glare fixing an issue where a status effect applied to enemy didn't indicate it was from crippling glare. Okay. Domain of the stillness reduce cooldown to 55, reduce mana cost to 75. Okay, we have a new card. Nice. We really need new cards. Epic. Really, 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 we really need it. Okay. So please start implementing new cards so we can actually have new decks because right now, like everybody is just using the same decks over and over. A form of rubbish. Grant one copy to all players. Okay. Cause. Uh, 13 intellect stats, 15 power, 180 max health, 210 max mana, that's a lot of mana, and he has a new, uh, he has a skill, an active ability, metamorphosis, morph target enemy hero into a bug for 3 seconds, oh my lord, players cannot use their ability or try attack with morph. Mana cost 150 second cooldown. Jesus, this is going to be a must have card by a support. This is going to be a must have card for supports. This is amazing. Also, you can choose across all the players. If you have a team that everybody have this card, you will be able to actually morph all players. Uh, this is crazy. It's crazy. This this car I think is really OP. Anyway, let's keep going. Gates of Salvation. Now this place a cooldown. A stagnant dominion increases slow magnitude from 
12% to 30% increased duration from 1 second to 1.5 seconds. The Tenor Pelicus Void Drone Mana Drain no longer applies the Stangent Dominion Slow, okay? Egan Scourge Burning Sensation Passive no longer applies the Stangent Dominion Slow. Zombie Guardian increased damage block to 100, that's a lot. Reduced cooldown to 55 seconds. Zombie Guardian. My god, it's going to be excellent. Joby Expector reduced duration to 6 seconds, okay? Now we go for, to the Grove uh, Affinity, Apex Predator, adjust cost from 2 Vitality 5 into 7 int, okay? Increase power from 10 to 13, now grants 18 ability defense, no longer grants, at, uh, grants attack speed, release was 14. Reduce max stats count from 40 to 30. Reduce ability defense bonus when at max stacks from 24 to 18, reduce cooldown to 3 seconds. We will have to test it out if Apex Predators is still viable in the game after this nerf, okay? Chantin Shaman increased mana region from Alice to 75%. Exoskeleton was reworked. They removed no longer reduced mana taken from enemy here by 6. Instead, they it actually grants uh, regenerate 30 health over 3 seconds first after taking damage during 6 seconds cooldown. That's pretty good. Exoskeleton is going to be a must have in the, in the new dual lane. This is going to be really good in order to have these changes. When, since you are going to have, uh, you are going to be in the duo line, you will have to exchange damage with the other duo, okay, the enemy duo. So this card really helps you a lot with sustain and to overcome the damage that you will receive in every exchange that you have with the enemy duo. So that's pretty, that's a really nice re uh, rework there. Malek Nasher increased damage per stack from a four four percent to five percent. That's pretty nice. I used this card with Gideon. It is awesome. The damage output with that card is unbelievably strong. Spiking had just come from two in four in to one in uh, to one uh, two white four in. Sorry about that. To one white five in. Thunder Cleave increased damage from. 100% basic damage to 125 basic damage, reduce cooldown to 14 seconds. This is pretty good. This is going to be pretty nice. 14 seconds is a lot. A trapper increases slow magnitude to 5% per stack, max stacks 10 stacks, and increase root duration to 1.5 seconds. This is pretty nice. I use trapper in one of my decks with twin blasts. It's amazing. It's really amazing. What you can do with Trapper, uh, with with Twin Blast, because you have the two shots and Trapper count those two shots has two stacks, so that's pretty amazing what you can do. So instead of landing ten hits, you only need to line, uh, you only need to land five shots with Twin Blast. Let's say in that way, if you point in the right direction and you land the two shot, it's going to be really fast to get to the uh, stacks to the 10 stack and land the root. So, Trapper with Twin Blast, really awesome card, in my own opinion. Increases uh, Venture, uh, Vengeful Mire, increases low magnitude from 15 to 30%. Whoa, and reduces slow duration to 2.5 seconds. Now we go to the Chaos uh, and the last Affinity. Amplification Engineer reduced cost from 4. Uh, agility 9 intellect to 2 agility 10 intellect. They increase they, they didn't well they reduce the agility but they increase the intellect. Okay, amplification engineer. Reduce power from 24 to 20, reduce max mana to 180, increase damage to 12% current health. That's a lot. Increase reduce uh, reduce to 1300 no longer this damage dominion will only damage enemy hero that clutter ability which are considered a basic attack cannot treat no longer place the that clutter passes on cooldown that, that's pretty good living guardian reduce duration to three seconds okay riot sapper increase percentage current mana drained to 40 percent oh my god that's a lot oh my god that's a lot Tireless Reaper increased mana refund to 35%. And they polished some 
they pull some bugs and they fix some bugs. Mother Tree, Healing Towers, Advanced Evolution, and now they place one status bar icon for both health and mana region to limit status bar span. Improved tool, tip clarity, also a card, update status, and so forth. Okay. Uh, in my review, I agree with all the cards balances and how they actually reward exoskeleton to be able to be used in the dual lane but I gotta be honest this new car form of rubbish I think it's going to be I don't know I think it's too much three seconds in a MOBA is long time and if you take into consideration that everybody has it for example if you have a team that actually everybody has form of rubbish and you actually manage to coordinate with all your, all your team to morph the enemies player you're gonna be killing it because you don't need to morph and to actually focus on the target that you want okay I don't know we'll see how it plays but damn that car is I think it's too OP gems all Paragon player existing in the future are now granted with one gem in their inventory mana reactor, increased damage taken per one mana restore to seven, reflections purify, increased damage setting threshold cleans to 400, and they polish and boot fix. With the UI, let's jump ahead. The, mo the biggest change incorporated with the UI is in the draft. We already saw it in the first video, in the first part of the video and let's see what other UI modification this patch is bringing into the table. Cards cards on the HUD now show the number of effects stock occur plus number of users remaining. That's pretty good. Cool. Health bars, fix real graphical errors with overhead helper bars for heroes and minions that result in Neo Glow. Yeah. Further turn the overhead health bar colors for all unit types. Health bars now have consistent colors across different bars. Pip markets are now at 250 health across all health bars. A new health bar position, top of the screen, bottom and corner. You can choose in the, between the three of them. Player status frame, normal and advanced. Normal similar to what we previously had with XP, gold, etc. Advanced, adds attributes, basic attack damage, attacks per second, so forth. Positions, positions have been updated to carry support mid jungle and solo. Players are now required to select. Remember, uh, let me go a little bit back forward. Uh, back, uh, <laughs> let me go back a little bit. Sorry. Uh, positions have been updated to carry support mid uh, jungle and solo, which means now we have the dual lane and the solo lane. Okay, basically that's what this is about. Players are now required to select a position prior to selecting a hero in the draft. Players might choose conflicting positions, but a warning will show you are now only show the loading screen tips for you select position. Players now spawn in the position closest to the, your position lane. That's pretty good. It was really annoying when you were like the off laner and you always were spawning in the right, <laughs> in the <laughs> in the right of the of the. Of actually of the spawn position in the base it was really annoying okay it takes you a little bit more in order to get into the in your lane lane guides guide player to their selected lane these are automatically disabled at five minutes this can be permanently disabled in the center menu good mastery onboarding dialogue updated to reflect these changes okay ability upgrade panel cooldown is now displayed current ability level is now displayed added a call to action to upgrade block awesome ua scale now allows you to decrease or increase the size of the hud and indicator that's pretty good that's really good um dress have been visually redesigned to support picking your position prefer choosing your hero cooldown and out of mana alert now have a feeling graphic showing time remaining until the ability is available Added new jungle indicators that show that positions and the status of all jungle camps while in that section of the jungle. Okay, that's pretty good. Updated the animation sound and color of the killer layer frame to be more noticeable and last longer. Hmm. Flipping the source 
and effect text in the above entry so that the source is the primary bit of information, updated animation and sound of team comms to make them more noticeable. Team comms, okay. Reduce the audio effect when taking critical damage and increase the mix of enemy sound effects when critical wounded. Nice. And sound polish and poof fixes. In the general in the general section they just change the story content and the loot trade content and this is much it okay uh, with the general changes the UE the UI changes the gems and the car I'm pretty happy I think they are going in the right direction but I feel what they need to do stop making big changes start delivering more content into the game and what I mean about content they need to add more cards and more gems we need more diversity in the decks okay that's my how I feel okay I understand that now they're trying to drive the game into another type of MOBA with I don't know more focus on hero vs hero combat with some MOBA mechanics and that's okay, but I think now really Epic need to get their, let's say, shit together, okay? And so making these huge patches that just delay the final version of the game, okay? And that's, uh, that's what I think. They need to actually move forward into delivering the game, into adding more content into the game. It will be nice maybe to see more maps, it will be nice. Uh, to see more uh, modes, okay, more game modes, it it will be really nice to see a lot of cards being implemented, new cards to be implemented, new gems that actually give you more diversity into the game, okay. So, well, guys, in my own opinion, what really worries me is how the game is being driven a little by little by Epic into a more focus game of hero versus hero combat rather than that MOBA mechanics okay I've been saying this in my old previous videos but this is how I feel all these changes how they're actually increasing the damage and decreasing the defense just give the sensation that they want to shorter the combat but they want us to actually fight faster they want us to fight uh, really in the early game more often and they're focusing this game more in that aspect okay more combat uh, and I don't know I don't feel that's what MOBA makes a MOBA I think MOBA is more about strategy and communication with your teammates uh, and MOBA is more focused on actually objective rather than combat. But I have to say it's, it's really fun to play Paragon. Uh, I really enjoy playing Paragon. I enjoy playing other games. But I don't know how this will affect in the long term. Okay? I hope that they are more MOBA features to actually enhance that MOBA features in the game rather than the combat aspect of the game but anyway guys if you like the video remember to subscribe don't forget to give me a like and i'll see you next time peace